Good evening and welcome to another Angel Studies and it's your girl Angel and I just want to thank everyone who's been tuning in recently um, to my Bible studies. I pray you've been blessed. Um, this week I'm not going to be reading a chapter but I am going to be talking on the subject of new beginnings. I'm excited for this. Um, if you haven't already, the book is available on Amazon. I'm not a preacher, but God speaks through me. Author A. L. Smith. So you can grab that on Amazon, or if you want a signed exclusive copy, you can DM me or message me on any of my social media platforms, and I will make sure you get a copy. Um, keep in mind, this is a temporary cover design. Um, we will be revamping the cover. Um, I'm definitely working on that. So stay tuned. But this is definitely a temporary cover. But the book is available. And this one will be worth something once we change the cover because it'll be an exclusive nobody it'll only be the people who have this one so definitely if you want to copy um amazon.com or you can im me dm me whatever you use and i'll make sure you get a copy so today um i'm gonna do this a little different and i can't lie it's a little bit out of my comfort zone but if I'm not stretching myself, then I'm not doing it right, right? Um, and so when we think about the topic of new beginnings, there's so many things that come to mind for me. Um, I was given this topic off the fly. And so I definitely wanted to come in and just speak to you guys on the topic of new beginnings. Um, you know, I prayed before I started this. Um, and just ask God, you know, to kind of deal with me concerning what he would have to say to you guys concerning the subject of new beginnings. Um, if we look around at the world um, that we have going on right now, you can see that things the way they were are definitely so much different now. And it doesn't seem like it's going to get back to where we were. Okay, like if you came up at my age and some people might be like, girl, you're young. But I remember when there was no Internet and, you know, our children will never understand what that was like. So, you know, it's a new beginning for us. You know, we can look back and say, well, we went outside. Well, our children are like, that's like. Why would you want to send this outside? So life as we knew it is different. And, you know, whether it be a good new beginning or, you know, some uh, uneasiness, it's a new beginning. And so when I think about this subject, there's so many ways this can go. But before I get ahead of myself, y'all know I always start in prayer. So let's get that out of the way. So Heavenly Father, God, we thank you right now for this day. God, we thank you for bringing us together once more on a Monday evening to give you praise, to glorify your name, to stand before your presence with thanksgiving. God, we ask right now that the word that will come forth, God, would be straight from your lips, God, that angel would decrease, that you would increase in me, that the words that would come forth, God, would be nourishment, that it would be fresh manna from heaven for your people, God. We bless you right now and we praise you. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. So <clears throat> y'all get a peek today into kind of like what my process is, so to speak. Um, it's a lot different. Um, but usually when a topic is dropped into my spirit, um, I go straight for my Bible. So when I was dropped New Beginnings, um, I went into my Bible app. I encourage everybody to get it. Um, it's very good because like with the Bible app, you have um, plans. You and this is not this is not like a disclaimer, like we're not sponsored by the Bible app or anything, but I swear by this thing. And I had like 
I'm I'm so into my streak and this thing was all messed up when I switched my phones and I was really upset about that. Um because I I'm in my word daily. And so I was like 300 and some odd days in and as you can see I had like 189 straight weeks but it was different so that's bothering me so don't look at that 11 days thing because I've been in my Bible more than 11 days but anyway a good practice for anybody and this goes right along with new beginnings so it's not a ramble because I'm thinking that in my head but you know if you're looking to start a new routine to kind of get yourself in the habit of just having some alone time or being in your word, this is a great place to start because with the Bible app, every day you get a new verse. That's the first thing you see when you open it up. And so you have your verse of the day. Um, and so that's where it started for me, just getting a nice verse every day, reading it, and then every once in a while to tell you, you know, here's some plans that go along with this verse and then you can do like a two to three day plan and the plans get you some reading and different things like that so it helps you to kind of correlate the stuff together so like I was saying so my process is usually to come into this bible and search my keywords and so this week's keywords was new beginnings new beginnings and I'm sure we all are going through some new beginnings right now. I know for me, um, personally, um, if you don't know my story, I was disabled for a very long time. Um, I couldn't walk. I went from regular crutches to a knee scooter to a walker to forearm crutches to now I'm just walking. And I bless God every day for that because I remember the succession. I remember feeling like, will I ever walk again? I remember feeling like this is it for me. And I remember that day I went to the doctor and he said to me, your best bet is just to cut the leg off. <laughs> and I remember saying, um, yeah, I don't know what God you serve. But the God I serve said, I'm going to walk again. And he was like, yeah, good luck with that. Most people with your condition never get back to full health. It's just better. You know, needless to say, I didn't go back to him. But my point is, you know, I had that much faith back then that no matter what these people were saying, I was going to walk again. And y'all will be happy to know I walk. Of course, there's a lot more to the story. And maybe someday we'll have that sit down. But until then, um, so this, you know, my new beginning is getting back in the workforce. Um, I've been divorced now. So, you know, walking through that process of, you know, single momhood something I never thought I would have to deal with at one point and then you know getting back into the field and the other things that come with that very personal with my life in that regard so sorry y'all we're not going there but my point is um you know new beginnings can be beautiful and then they can be scary and then they can be a little uneasy but it's a process that we all go through at some point. And so, of course, we got to make this um, Bible related. So I pulled up some scriptures based on new beginnings. And this is usually how I start my process. I'll find some scriptures. I'll write them all out. I meditate on them for a couple of days. And then I ask God, what would he have me to say to you guys? And I'll find some anchor scriptures and you know that usually it helped me out so one of the ones that i was just looking at that i think is very prominent um and stands out to me um i have first john 2 and 13 and it says i'm writing to you fathers those believers who are spiritually mature because you know him who has existed from the beginning and I'm writing to you, young men, those believers who are growing in spiritual maturity, because you have been victorious 
and have overcome the evil one. I have written to you, children, those who are new believers, those spiritually immature, because you have come to know the Father. And so in this verse, we have him coming to the elders and then he's coming to the, I guess they would call this the seasoned saint, so maybe not an elder or a father, but you, you got some skin in the game. And then we have the children in the face, so those would be the new believers. So everybody is covered in here. God didn't leave anybody out he he came to everybody um so second john one and five says now i ask you lady not as if i were writing to you a new commandment but simply reminding you of the one which we have had from the beginning that we love and unselfishly seek the best of one another the best so to tie this in, I feel like when we have new beginnings and the uncertainty and the fear and the anxiety, um, God is saying to us, he's still with us. This is not new to God. And if you have an understanding of the word and not acknowledge the word, we understand that God was there in the beginning and he sees the end at the beginning so while we're on a new path god already has seen this at the end so a lot of times when we're embarking on something god to show us the end but not necessarily the beginning and so god to say i have this or that for you and we're like yes i've seen it he showed me it but then as we begin that walk through it's like this ain't what you showed me god because a lot of times, if God were to show us the battle that has to ensue to get to the finish line, many of us wouldn't even attempt it. And that's not the way. So John 15 and 5 says, I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I am him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. And that's so true because if you think about a tree, and I love the analogies that are used throughout the Bible, I guess it's the poet in me, but think about a tree. When a branch falls, it's dead. It's not like the branch is gonna fall on the ground and then leaves is gonna grow on it and it's just gonna continue to live. No, once that branch is separated from the tree, it is no longer producing. And so what God is saying is you have to stay connected. You know, there's going to be some trimming. There's going to be some pruning. But all in all, we have to stay strong enough in our faith to stay connected to the life source, which is the tree. Um, as branches, we have to be strong. <laughs> and if not, we get separated from the tree and then we have no nourishment um so revelations 21 and 1 here's another scripture that came up in my new beginning search so it says then i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away or vanished and then there is no longer any sea and so in my previous studies of this, um, it was fascinating to me that this new heaven has no seas. And so why is that fascinating to me? Well, because the seas, the water, it represented um, a vital source that we needed. Okay. Um, but that's no longer going to be necessary um, when we get to our final home because there's no longer going to be need for that. Our souls don't need physical water. We will be nourished by the Father. So those things that we once needed will no longer be something that we need. Um, so it's, you know, it comes as a, uh, what's the word I want to use? 
things that we need now, we won't need once we get to our final home. So that's that. <laughs> um, so when we think about this new heaven, um, that's the goal in life to get to this new heaven. We are simply passing by here on earth. This is not our final home. And some of us are a little too comfortable with the world. And we're not realizing that the one thing that we're all promised in this life is that we have a destination and we have a death. <laughs> That's the only thing certain. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. And so knowing that when we think about this journey here on earth, we should keep that in mind because like I said, we're only just passing through. This is not our home. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm trying to get to my final home with the father because he has many mansions and it says, I go to prepare a place for you. And I'm going to read that um, because I feel like when it's red, it, it's not red for understanding. And I don't think people really understand what is being said in that scripture. Um, and I think it's important that we understand because it makes it, it makes it come to life for us. Let me find it. This is why I don't do it this way. <laughs> Because it's like a lot of dead space. And I don't want to do that. But here we are. Okay. So let me pull up the full chapter. All right. So I'm looking at John 14. And I'm going to read from verse 1. I'll stop periodically to just kind of go through this. But I want this to really resonate to you right now. So it says, do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, or cowardly. Believe confidently in God and trust in him. Have faith, hold on to it, rely on it, keep going, and believe also in me. Now here's the verse. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. See, everybody read that all together. So I'm going to read that again slowly so that you can hear how it's supposed to sound. In my father's house are many dwelling places. And if it were not so, I would have told you because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. And to the place where I'm going, you know the way. So what, what Jesus was saying here was, I'm going here right now and I'm going to get the house ready for you. So when it's time for you to come home, your house is already prepared. And it's so many layers to that. Maybe one day we'll go into that. But um, when somebody was espoused back in the Bible days, there was a process. And the man would have to go and get the land together to bring his wife to the house. And like I said, um, that's a story for another day. But that's a new beginning. And so, you know, we have to be ready at all times. Um, and it's important that we stay in our word. We have to stay strong in it because the enemy is going to come with everything he has. And he's going to try and take everything and twist it up. And that's why you have to have a good understanding and a good, strong foundation of the word so that when the enemy comes with his schemes and his tactics, you can shoot them down. You can shoot them down. And they won't mean anything to you because you'll know what God says. That's important because my father said this. That's what Jesus used when Satan tempted him. You know, he's like, it is written. And that's how we need to be. It is written. And if we know what's written, then we can counteract everything the enemy is sending our way. So I thank you guys for tuning in with me. I'm not going to ramble on much longer, but I just wanted to 
come in and kind of talk about the subject of new beginnings because as we see you know with everything going on in the world gas prices going up the ukraine and russia this could mean a new beginning for all of us and it may seem scary um it may even be out of our comfort a little bit but just know that god saw the end at the beginning none of this has caught him by surprise and those of us that are in him and rely on him will know that the peace of God will keep us. And we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to fear. We just got to trust in God. So as you be as you embark on your new beginnings today, I I just want to encourage you to stay in your word. Get a fresh understanding and knowledge of everything that's there to you. We lack, we, we, we perish because of lack of knowledge. And lack of knowledge is on us because everything is so easily at our disposal these days. We don't have to walk miles and miles or a day's journey to get to the prophet of God. We can get them right on our phones, on YouTube or Facebook Live or Instagram or we have access to our Bible right through an app. So we have no excuse to not know the things other than we just didn't attempt to. So I pray you guys were blessed by today. Um, next week, I pray to have a lesson, whether I read a chapter out of the book or one from the new one. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how God moves. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for being with us today, God, for showing up and just allowing your word to manifest, God. We ask that you would cover your people as we embark on a new beginning, God, that you would strengthen us, that you would give us courage to step into new territories, God, to, to step out in faith and not in fear, God. That every fear, every anxiety that comes our way, God, that we can cast it down, knowing that our help cometh from you. God, bless us and keep us in your perfect peace and your will, God. Cover those sick and afflicted in our bodies. Cover those grieving in this season, God. Stretch your hands out and wrap them around us. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. I'll see you guys next Monday, same time, same place. God bless.